All right, so I decided to take the opportunity to actually do a recording here. So what we actually do have is a 2007 Honda Fit, the, comp the <coughs> complaint that was reported is that there exists a noise while driving when doing a test drive um, it had actually, the noise had actually been noted now what we suspect is a wheel bearing issue so what was done was that the car was jacked up yeah, the car was primarily jacked up on the front wheels so back wheels sort of on the ground although slightly lifted due to the articulating suspension and also <clears throat> the articulated suspension so by right if you're going to be doing this you would actually put the you'd actually chop the back wheels but so those of us who have been doing this for years and can't be bothered but let's show you what the actual sound that's being reported or sound that was being heard via the test drive so we then determine try to determine if this is a how do you say differential related issue or a brake related issue such this is use so this most likely sounds like something 100% brake um, brake related And so a, I'm suspecting a complete disassembly of the brake assembly would be in order to address this particular issue. All right, so we are back to this again. So the vehicle had jacked up, pulling off the wheels. Wheels are previously Lug nuts are previously um, loosened. <clears throat> Using nitro clean to tear off. Now let's take a uh, we're gonna have to pause again while we go through the process of getting some sort of inspection light. So hold again. All right, so here we are. One of the things we had, sorry, one of the things to note is that, I don't know how well this is gonna look on camera. However, there is not much brake material left. So the brakes are basically done. So I'm suspecting that to be the fault, but to confirm it, we will go through the process of pulling off the brake pad and inspecting that. While I look for a suitable sized socket set. Number 12 millimeter socket. So I had previously loosened this one. So I can get the camera to get the light to focus. So pulling this off is as simple as pulling these two bolts, bolt number one, bolt number two. For a Honda, it requires just a 12 millimeter, which I've already pulled this one. I'm gonna pull this one up top here in just a sec. All right, kind of tricky holding this but well, gonna open it so let us see I don't know how much of this you can actually see in the video how oh, we'll be pulling off these brick shoes pull off this one inner outer 
And so the smoking gun portion of the story exists with and what can actually be seen here is that the piston has come out so much so we're going to need to use the comp um, use a clamp to push this back in it's going to be an interesting process let's pause and hold that talking about a trusty clamp and we're using this that's what this actually looks like here just take my this has not been used in a while so this is the time we talk about using good old fashioned WD-40 silicone specialist lubricant and we lubricate the stuff This is the part of the puzzle that has caught me a bit off guard. time where we actually pause a sec pause a sec to do something this is very important that I actually forgot the reservoir for the master cylinder needs to actually be opened to atmosphere pops open should have done this from the very beginning. I'm actually doing this one handed. So, what's going to happen? This actually should be open to atmosphere. The open for the purpose of allowing. <clears throat> when we squeeze the master cylinder in, air is going to have to come up and out without without this off if this actually maintain pressure the is a there's a washer or one-way check valve that's going to actually burst under the pressure i think that's, that's the way this has been explained to me so that like so This socket just took the socket for the purpose of maintaining that space. Stuff this inside here, like so. Then I'll probably just use. This in an interesting way, getting a, getting something like a G clamp or a C clamp would be much better something that you can actually turn Oops, let me do this a 
justice. Kind of tricky doing this on camera for y'all to see what is ha what's happening. But I'll soon tell you to explain to you the general gist of what we're trying to achieve here. Alright. So what we're trying to achieve here is to push this piston here that's right there in the center that my index my thumb is actually pointing on inward I'm trying to push this in this direction so what I do have is this on a piston press turn 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 Going back in. Turn, 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 turn. And so now that we've actually gotten this back in. So we've now, I've now turned this to the point that the piston is now back flat in with this whole caliper assembly here, bracket assembly. So I can now pull this off. Alright, so this is where I also forgot to mention that you need to use some sort of, or it's strongly advisable that you use some sort of grease and not motor oil to lubricate these portions. These, these portions of um, where your rotor sits in, here, here, uh, here, here, but don't touch any of it on this for the purpose of the fact that yeah, your, your brakes move naturally as you um, press them move very very slightly eventually over time <clears throat> just to get rid of any chatter that does a very good job of doing um, of getting rid of that and since these really aren't Brembo's anyway. Uh, this particular oh, let's talk about let's talk about new versus used brake pads and thickness. Hold on. These particular um, brake pads in question are the new ones, but it looks like they've been installed on some put on some vehicle before. Because these were bought from a parts to, from an auto parts shop, which clearly had them used on a vehicle before this. Yep. So these are new brakes and these are the used ones. Let's take a moment to see if we can actually spot the difference. I'm going to pause a moment while I loop, go and loop these all up. Alright, I was just reminiscing about. <clears throat> um, so, this was purchased um, through. Alright, so when I mentioned grease already. Um, I mentioned grease before. I didn't mean to, to talk about greasing the face of the actual thing. It's just, just around these parts where it would come in contact with that. That's where you'd lubricate. Let's do a test. 
fit. Just to make sure these things fit where they're supposed to go. And indeed they do. stuff try to pull this on camera so Manual is what I use. This isn't necessarily a endorsement of Manual and its products, but they have treated me well over the years. This is the thick gray stuff very important do not get any part of the grease on the friction surfaces I'm using this small flathead screwdriver and not my finger to do this. Because I'm not using introducing any form of grease to the actual rotor itself. I would not need to use any form of what you call it brake cleaner. Let me get a case lamp let you see what's going on on the inside here so this is the part where I should warn you about the hazards of working with brake dust or the like it's not good don't breathe this stuff in and if you're in California, you should stay away from this job altogether. Um, <clears throat> leave it to your mechanic because of the uh, California Proposition 65 warning. Side is gonna be a little all right so my GoPro had stopped recording I don't know what what point it actually did but 
currently in the phase of putting things back together reassembling these fake brimbos if I say it often enough they will become real brimble brakes so I'm going to do some do some hammering would complete the process for this particular rotor all that we would then need to do would just be to bleed the brake we would just simply pull we would simply just pull this um, crack this nipple and start, start the car crack the nipple and it's have somebody else to simply pump the brake on the inside and then we will close this once the foot, once the pedal is fully depressed and all air is bled out of the system and that would complete that process. So let's do a recap with this whole thing on the other side of the vehicle. So watch we just put the lug nuts back on just to complete this side of the vehicle. And then we'll do the same for the other side as a recap. So doing the other side of the vehicle will be the same as this one, but I'm recording it just the same for the purpose if there was a step or process that was missing on this side then um, in the recording process then you would see it literally <coughs> being recorded on the other side there this is a Honda so it doesn't require any of course, we, we know Hondas don't produce any torque, so no torque actually needed for the um, for the lug nuts. Can finger tight is just fine. Yeah, finger tight is just fine. But for those folks who will have concerns, we're gonna drop the vehicle. We're gonna lower the vehicle and. will have concerns we're gonna just snug them up properly oh maybe the camera is not looking at this Yeah, so this 
this completes the side of this room. We're gonna now switch over to the other side and do this whole process all over again. Alright, so I've actually done a slightly different method of jacking this time around. Um, so like the first time, uh, well the previous day I had I just simply place the jack on that right there that the stud for the rear lower control arm bushing and place the jack stand under this this post here in question. Let's move the silver like so. Found a spot where I can place the jack lift. Place the jack there. Gently crack and lower this. Yeah, so the car rests squarely on on that, which is fine by me. All right, I had previously cracked these lug nuts to shave, save you the boredom of having to watch me do it. For those of you who may be concerned about how easily those lug nuts came off, I did not leave them finger tight. Alright, let's pull oh, that one. This is not nice and easy. Oh, shoot. Yeah, so. Loosen this one up top here with the number 12. That, that cracks off nice, nice, and easy. Now, this one, uh, number 12 again. Let's see if I can get the flashlight to show you what I'm referring to. So, this is it. it there all right oh so these both came off easy easy <coughs> again that brick dust I hope this stuff is asbestos free or else I would be screwed in more ways than one later on in life you hear me complaining about having Cancer or some weird uh, thing like that would not want that to reach me. Ironically, Mercedes is actually on. Well, today is Sunday. Today is Sunday, the 18th of. Ah, today is Monday. Shook's Monday. Yeah, Mercedes had her cancer walk over the. Oh, that kind of sound weird. Um, a cancer awareness march rather. All right, so showing you this a cancer awareness march on Sunday. This break is done, 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 done. The line I can't quite see it, but the line stair is done. This warning thing here is also gone. So for this one, it's for this particular brick caliper assembly, it's going to be the same treatment in which we'd roll this back in like so, pull that back out, push. So this is my caveman way of doing it. So if I can get this, unfortunately we don't have the sun advantage so I hope you all are seeing this in good in some amount of detail I recorded this in 4k so hoping that it would kind of offset the GoPro Hero 9's ability 
inability to be able to see well in low lighting conditions. So this is the assembly again, just like the last time in which I'll turn, simply just turn this handle, push the piston in, compressing, compressing this piston back in its in here. All right, so my GoPro conked out again, overheating. Recording at 4K 50 frames per second. Yeah, the GoPro just overheats. So, here we are. I don't I have no idea what time it actually um, had overheated, but let's go on with the show. So, the reinstallation of, installation of the fake Brem Brembo's. The trick is to actually press this in. I was trying to screw these out, but I press that in. That goes in like so. Now, this number 12 bolt simply goes back into its little space here. can see what's going on here. I think this is kind of casting a shadow. Let's see if we can see it from this angle. That is there. This is oops. Watch it. So Hammer time. it this completes that process breaks on and what will be noticed kind of tricky to see in under this kind of lighting but these break um, spots actually cover over this rusted area here so breaking should be significantly improved under the circumstances let's see what happens yeah breaking should actually be better now all right so just to put back on the wheel yep, yep. <coughs> yeah put Put the wheels back on, drop the vehicle down, and start the car, pump up the brakes, put the, what do you call it? Put the master reservoir cylinder cover back on, um, cover back on, and good to go.
And so this is that moment I say, if you have any queries or do you have any queries or concerns, uh, drop a comment in the video and I will respond as quickly as I possibly can. Again, it's a Honda, so lug nuts only need to just be finger tight. There are no specific.